Hey guys, Chad Hoover, welcome to today's episode where as promised, I'm doing a boat review of another boat. In this case, the Old Town Big Water PDL 132. As a matter of fact, it's the Old Town, it's in their Sportsman series, but this is the pedal version. And what makes the boat a PDL is PDL just stands for pedal drive. I don't have any experience in this boat other than paddling it or pedaling it or both at, at ICAST a couple years ago. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it over to, yet again, my buddy, Anthony Winkleman. Uh, he's the, on the Old Town Pro staff, so he's able to get boats when a lot of us out there can't get boats right now because again, I was gonna buy the entire Sportsman series, review them and then give them to you guys, but they're sold out to like June, July, and in some cases, even August, which kind of demonstrates the popularity of the boat. We're down here filming an episode and we're changing water. So because we changed waters, Anthony actually changed to a boat that's more applicable uh, to the fishery that we're in. And what's cool about that is we get to take a look at two different boats. So this boat is very popular. When it first came out, um, it hit the ground running and it hasn't stopped. This led into the development of the, the autopilot series. And so I'm gonna turn it over to Anthony. I'm gonna let him tell you how he rigs his boat, what he loves about it, what he doesn't love about it. I'm gonna get some time in it today before we're done so I can give you my impressions. Uh, and at the end of the video, be sure to stay tuned for the pros and the no's, and I'll give you everything you need to know about purchasing this boat, especially since if you can't get into one to try before you buy. So Anthony, take it away, my friend. Sounds good, Chad. Uh, well, big thing about this, you know, like you said, it, they are hard to get. I honestly am still new to this. I have not fully got it rigged out the way I personally will have it completely ready and done. I don't have, you know, lights on it, but it's probably gonna stay a non-motorized vessel. Um, if it does get a motor, it's gonna be further down the line, but it is a very, very light hole. Um, I can't give you the exact weight on it. I think it's somewhere around the 70-ish pounds, 75-ish pounds. Um, so it's very easy for somebody that doesn't want to manhandle, say something like the autopilot or, uh, you know, on the sportsman line that's got a little bit beefier weight and of course you got that big battery. Um, we have changed waters today. So, you know, I've, I've been to these waters. I honestly don't, you know, need the autopilot and it's kind of an area that the water gets kind of shallow in a lot of places. So that motor, I don't want to be paddling that autopilot a lot. So that's why I brought the big water. Um, we're starting up, we'll just start up at the nose here. You know, it's got a great sleek design. This thing cuts through water beautifully. And just right off the bat, the biggest thing about this one over say the autopilot is the hole access, the, this hatch that is here. I mean, this thing, there's tons of room to store so much and it's great for holding your catch boards. You can just slap that on up in there. I mean, they have also tons of mounts that you can get and put it in different places. It works great. Um, going on from there, it's got two mounting plates here. You can mount your fish finders up here. You can mount, you know, just camera attachments, whatever you want it to be. Going from there is you have this little slot here. Um, there's a few people out there that are making mounts for transducers. Your transducer can mount right down here. You don't have to get necessarily the Yakutek switchblade or anything like that. You can just go straight down there with like the Navari, I think it's Navar is how you pronounce it, and run your wiring that way. Um, I've still yet to do that. I still gotta get that done, because like I said, these are so hard to get, and this is still kind of a new to me kayak. So going from there, you have two locking mechanisms. You lock the pedal drive down. I have it on my trailer, so I'm not quite able to lock it down and show you guys fully how that goes and how this deploys. But you go into the pedal drive, it's got a nice little lock here that'll hold it in place and holds everything locked down when needed. Um, all you do, it'll be a simple, you pull this back, it drops down the water. You have another latch down here, locks it in place. The big thing I really like about this is they've kept it such a narrow and sleek design is you still have, they, they really took advantage though of the whole interior. You have storage compartments here with these nice little rubber that keeps anything in place, soft plastics, tools, anything like that. And you got another one on that side. You have tracks on both sides with two separate ones on each one, so four total there. But then your pedal drive alone has this awesome 
dry box right here. I mean, you can, some people, I, I believe I've seen people put fish finders in these, putting small little, you know, 10 amp hour batteries and small fish finders, sonars and stuff like that on this, which is pretty smart idea. I mean, you know, I, I don't see anything going wrong with that. Um, the only issue is maybe, you know, running your transducer cable or something like that. Um, moving on from there, you have, the only thing I probably personally would have done, you have one rod holder right here. I probably would have put a second one over there. Um, just for one, how I like to measure fish uh, when it comes to being in this type of, you know, being in these old towns on this sportsman line. Then moving down, you have, a big thing is you have a very, very comfortable seat when it comes to the Big Water Series, the Predator Series. I mean, these seats are super comfortable, and of course you can get a kayak cushion to make it a little bit more comfortable. Um, lots of under seat storage. I mean, two fists high. I mean, it's, it, and it goes way back here, it, every bit of about 12 to 14, 15 inches. And so I can put my terminal tackle box and I can put all my soft plastics there because the rear does not have as near as much um, cargo space as a lot of the sportsman lines. And so, you know, that's, that, you know, that kind of counterbalances and makes it good. But another big feature is on the seat, there's a huge storage space right here underneath and it's good for putting all your knickknacks, soft plastics you want direct access to. Um, maybe if you're cranking and you have a box of cranks you want to keep with you, you can slide that in there and they're right there at, at convenience. This here, this whole seat can adjust. There's a whole track system right here that the seat, you just pull these up and the whole thing can slide forward and back at pretty well ease not nothing nothing too difficult about it uh, you do got a cup holder here and then over here is your rudder steering uh, it has this locking mechanism you just thread this nut here and it loosens that rudder and you can turn it now one thing i recommend is say you're drifting with the wind and you want to keep that rudder in line that rudder is very like you know sensitive so what i'll do is once i get in a position where i know i want to keep my rudder after I'm there, say I'm straight, I'll lock that nut down just a little bit, just a little bit, bit so it stays in place there. And I'll stay on course and I'll stay moving down the right line. Going on from there, of course, you have your paddle holder right there. So you keep your paddle on the sides, very convenient and handy. It's not in the way. It never really causes any type of issues at all. Um, on this side, you have your rudder deployment, same handle as the autopilot, uh, same, you know, and all the sportsman lines there. It's very convenient and easy to use. And then getting back here, you have another, underneath the seat is another hole access. It's a little bit harder to see because I got all this already on here. It is a little piled up, um, but you have another hole access down here and you can open that up. You can run a battery in there if you want to, you know, internally and keep it inside, however you want to do it, or if you want to run it in the front, but you have another hole access here. And then of course you have these clips that'll keep your seat nice and secured down while you're driving around or, you know, just on the water. Because one thing about the um, big water PDO on the Sportsman line here is it's not necessarily, it, you can stand up in it. I can stand up and fish just fine, but you have to keep your balance with these. These are not a flat bottom, they're not pontoons. It's meant for speed, it's meant for efficiency and light backwaters, you know, trying to, trying to get back in that skinny water. That's what this is for. So be a little bit cautious on leaning to the left or right. And you know, it's probably more for sitting down and you can, like I said, you can stand up in just about anything and I can stand up in this securely and safely. I'm just not going to lean over while I'm standing up and grab a fish in it. So definitely be cautious about that. Secure all your stuff down. Um, moving back to the rear cargo, you have two other track mounts here. You know, and I got the uh, Panfish Pro mounted back here at the Tacticam. Got the black pack, even though it's tan. And then, of course, all my Dobbins rods on it. And then Yeti cooler. So I have a lot still stored back here for a very small cargo space, this back here. Um, only other thing I probably would say is maybe I've made this, there's a circle here, which I'm sure it's meant for that. 
is a whole access right here. I don't see why not, but um, you know, it would have been nice to have maybe some access back here. You have a spot already for a power pole mount. It comes already with it. Now the difference from my understanding, because I did not have a Predator, um, is this area right here is of different length than the Predator. Uh, and I, I don't know if the shallow water anchor was already on there. I think this may possibly be new, but you know, don't, don't judge me on it if I'm wrong. But uh, I do know that this right here is different than the, uh, the Predator. I don't think there's any much more difference in the design um, between the two. But yeah, that is the Big Water PDL from the Old Town Sportsman line. And I hope you guys enjoyed the walkthrough. I don't think I missed anything. And if I did, and I think about it later, I'll tell you about it while we're out on the water and see if we can't catch some big fish. All right guys, so that is the on the water portion and now it's time for the part that you came for. I did a video called the top five factors for buying a fishing kayak and I'm gonna put the link to that up top and it'll be also in the description box. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pin my ratings in the top comment pinned to the top of this video. So you guys go down there in the comment section and give me your feedback and let's start a discussion about all of these kayaks. Now, when I have a boat that I can actually buy or I can get a loaner, I'm gonna spend more time in it and do the full on water myself. But in this scenario, we worked around that by you know, having Anthony do that. And, and we wanna get these boat reviews out there to help you guys with your purchasing decisions. So I'm gonna rate this boat on those top five factors. The number one factor is stability. And, so, and I'm gonna rate all of these boats on a, like a one to five scale. And again, we can have that discussion down in the comment section if you disagree. And remember, I'm 280 pounds, 6'2". So I'm gonna have a different perception than Anthony and then a different perception for you depending on where you fall on that scale for size. But I can only rate the boats for me. Um, so on a stability scale, I'm gonna call this boat a three out of five. And the reason that I say that is it's got really good secondary stability, but that initial stability is gonna give most people that tippy feeling. But to have a boat that performs well, you've gotta make sacrifices. So overall, I think that Old Town did the best they could to balance those two, to have an efficient hull and have that good secondary stability. But overall, uh, big picture, there's a lot more stable boats out there. So I'm gonna put this boat at a three for stability. Still plenty of stable, but it is one of those things where you do have to think about it. Because if you reach down too deep in the water for a fish, or you, you, can, you can go swimming uh, in this boat if you're a bigger dude. Um, the next thing on the rating scale is comfort, okay? And comfort in this boat is not an issue. The seat is comfortable. You don't have any issues there. Now, I will say when I do these pedal drive boats, that comfort is gonna be a combination of the seat comfort and the seat height to your hip height to ankle height and the pedal drive ratio because that does affect overall comfort uh, and performance of the boat. Um, so I'm gonna give this boat another three. And the reason that I'm doing that is there's just something about the seat height. I think that maybe the seat height could be a little higher uh, to the angle and it's also maybe because I'm 6'2". If you're a smaller person, that might not be the issue. But for my height, the seat height to, so the hip height to ankle height for the pedal drive is a little low for me. I'd like to see the, the seat higher and the pedal drive ratio be a little bit lower. But again, in a boat this compact with all the features, I still think they did an overall outstanding job of accomplishing everything that they needed to accomplish uh, in this smaller space. The next factor is rigability. And overall, the rigability is great. There's tracks pretty much anywhere you need to put things. This little compartment in the pedal drive is friggin' genius. That's a great little uh, location for that and a great use of space. 
Uh, I like the way that the seat position adjustment is very solid and it's easy to manage and you can't be, you know, cattywampus in the seat. So from that rigability standpoint, you've got a lot of functionality there. One of the things that they skimped on that I really wish they wouldn't have is these blank off pads up here. This is a great opportunity for some type of small track or something so you could put a camera mount. I get it that it's in the rotational arc of the pedal. I still think it would have been a great spot to put a transducer mount arm coming off the side or things like that. And that's gonna take me to my last point about rigability is that the transducer setup is a little weird, okay? And so again, that's that also exasperates why I think these should have had some type of track in them or some way to easily mount a Yak Attack switchblade or a ram arm to go over the side or some other way of mounting your transducer over the side because it's just not conducive to a really good setup without some additional stuff. And so for me, that's kind of a takeaway. The oversized hatch in the front is awesome. The internal hull access for electronics rigability is really is really good for a, a boat this size. And so for rigability overall, I'm gonna give it a four because it pretty much has everything it needs, but it can't hit five because there's a few things that I think could have been done uh, a little bit better. But overall, you can really hop in this boat and go fishing with plug and play accessories like rod holders and camera mounts and things like that. And you don't have to do a lot, but if you want to get a little bit more advanced and add a higher end transducer, if you want to do side scan and things like that, then you're going to have to make some adjustments that I think could have been addressed a little bit better. So the next factor to consider uh, is performance. When it comes to performance, meaning does the hole shovel and push water? Does it, does it glide well? Uh, does it have the right, you know, ratio of stability and performance. I'm going to give this boat a straight up five. Now I'm going to give it the five, but I'm going to remind you guys that I gave it a little bit lower rating on the seat to height ratio. So even though I'm giving it a five in performance, because I do think it performs very well, it turns like crazy. It's got good responsiveness. It sits in the water nicely. Um, you have to think about if it's a pedal drive, part of performance is how you feel when you're pedaling it. And for me, the seat to height, the, the hip height to ankle height ratio is a little bit off. So I'm not gonna take that away from performance. The hole performs well. I'm gonna go back to comfort and say that, that that seat height thing is a little bit more of a comfort issue. Now again, depending on how the stability relates to your weight, you may be able to add a seat cushion or something like that and compensate for that. But overall guys, this boat is a definite win. The last factor to consider uh, is affordability. And affordability for this boat is spot on. I mean, it's $25.99 currently. This is, uh, what are we, April of 2021, and that's the price of it right now. And I think that's right in line with every other boat in its class. I think the pedal drive is a little more premium than some of the other boats for the same price. Um, and some of the features that are automatically on the boat, uh, I think, are a little bit more than other boats in the exact same price range. So from an affordability standpoint, I'm gonna give it a five. Um, now it's time for the overall pros and no's. Okay, so the pros for me is very responsive, super stable from a secondary stability standpoint. Um, it has the amount of rigability that you need. Um, I love this little pod. This is probably the, the smartest thing on the whole boat that I haven't seen done. I like the way that the geometry works on this pedal drive so that this pivot happens so that the whole pedal drive is not fixed, uh, like in, a, in some cases. And I do like that even though you got a limited cockpit, you still, you still feel like it's plenty. Um, one of the other things that I noticed about this boat when I was standing up and fishing in it is you can actually reach down and turn the pedal drive with your hand and you can make little minor uh, position adjustments without having to pick up your paddle. So that's another really big pro. So the nose, okay, the nose for me, again, the transducer um, scenario is a little wonky. So I'm gonna throw that in the no category. And I just don't have any other ones unless I was gonna get really picky and put that seat height to pedal angle back in there. But again, I don't think that that's gonna be as big an issue for somebody that's Anthony's height or shorter. I'm just a tall dude. And honestly, I'm really weird. I'm built like a bullfrog. So most of my height is from my hips down. So I've got legs like I'm six foot eight and a torso like I'm 6'2", so it, it could just be a me thing. So overall guys, pro versus no, this is a definite pro. Uh, if you can find this boat and you're looking for a compact, versatile, easy to maneuver uh, fishing kayak, then definitely put this, um, 
this big water PDL um, on your list of boats to consider. Definitely try before you buy. This boat responded very differently than I thought it would just from looking at it and I have a lot of experience. So if you don't have a lot of experience, get out there in this boat and give it a try. Now, a factor that came up when I rated the five factors for, for um, uh, purchasing a fishing kayak that kept coming up over and over and over in the comments was transportability. And so again, I overlooked that. So I'm gonna make that a bonus section of all of these review videos. Transportability, you'll notice that Anthony is transporting his on a trailer. And that's an option for pretty much every fishing kayak out there. But I do think this boat is easy to transport. It's easy to drag, it's easy to maneuver. Uh, you can throw it in the back of your truck. You can throw it on top of a, a car SUV very easily. And so for me, it, it gets a five in transportability because it's not limited to one mode of transport. So I added that feature in and I'm gonna start talking about that in all the videos. So again, guys, hope you liked this video. Smash that thumbs up if you like to see more of these. Leave a comment, sec a comment in the comment section below and go down there on my pinned comment and let's have a discussion about your thoughts on this boat. If you maybe have more experience in it than I do or Anthony does. See you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching and now it's time to go back out there and catch some more fish.